Hello, um, so great to see you all. Uh, really lovely to see some Tech Tech alumni, uh, those of you that have come before. I love the fact that you've come back. Hopefully it means we're doing something right. Um, and it's not just because we choose awesome places to have the conference in. <laughs> we even got the weather for you this year. I know last year and the year before, we were a bit dodgy on the weather. So yeah, we, we ordered the weather special. Uh, it's supposed to be lovely and sunny, lovely and warm today. Um, so yeah, welcome, welcome to Lisbon, and, and thank you so much to all of the people that have travelled quite a long way to get. I know some of, for some of you, it's been an incredibly arduous journey. Um, so well done, and uh, and thank you. Really, really excited to spend the next couple of days with you. Um, just a very brief uh, update on some of the things that we've been doing in the research team in my society the last year. Um, we've been developing some research training that we're able to deliver. And we have also been doing some consultancy work. Um, so we've decided to kind of professionalize this side of our work a little bit. Um, we've always kind of said we're very open to partnership, we're open to working with people, uh, but we've never really spelled out what that might look like. So we've got a little bit more information on the website now if you wanted to, to partner with us or you wanted some practitioner training and research, that kind of thing. We'll be previewing some of that uh, in our workshop after the break. We have also got a shiny new data website. Uh, we've said for, for years, you know, we've got all of this awesome data that we, you know, we don't even know what a lot of it says because there's so much of it and so few of us. And we quite often get re requests randomly from researchers around the world saying, oh, this data is really cool. Do you have it? You know, can you extract it? Um, we now have this shiny new data site, data.mysociety.org, um, that puts all of that data in one place uh, with APIs as well. So if you wanted to go and have a look around, uh, please do. Uh, there's interesting stuff there. Or if there's other things that you think we might have that aren't on that site, uh, get in touch. We may be able to, to do something about extracting some of that too. So you'll have seen on the agenda that I'm supposed to talk about opinions and facts, um, or the difference between opinions and facts. I think most of you in this room know what the difference is, so I'm not going to teach you to suck eggs at this point. Um, really, this particular title came up because the wonderful Gemma, who basically single-handedly organizes this, I really don't deserve any credit. Uh, she's very strict. Uh, the speakers in the audience will know that she emails you weeks and weeks in advance and asks for a title so it can be put into, uh, into the literature. And she's just as strict with us internally. We don't get any special treatment. We have to give her uh, the title weeks and weeks in advance. And I was a little bit flustered. I was like, oh, I think I might want to talk about facts and opinions or something. So this is what we've ended up with. Uh, <laughs> and I think I, I, was, I was thinking about this at the time. Uh, because I was actually feeling a little bit weary. Um, it might have just been the British winter, you know, cold, dark, January, and this of it all. Um, but I was actually feeling a little bit weary about like all of the, the things I was reading, whether that was on Twitter or at the social media, whether that was just reading news online. Um, yeah, there seemed to be a, a weight uh, of opinion. And it was really hard trying to sift out some of those facts. I mean, just for me personally, um, the, the Brexit fiasco uh, is, that's just my personal opinion, by the way. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure other people think Brexit's wonderful. Um, but you know, for me, just reading about that, trying to kind of siphon the actual facts of what's happening from, from all of the conjecture and speculation and, and the way people are twisting information, I find fairly exhausting. Uh, on top of that, you know, you have things you're trying really hard at uh, in a work environment, and you put it out into the world after a lot of sweat and tears and, and all sorts, and it's immediately shredded on Twitter, or you know, a whole barrage of opinion comes your way, and you don't even know where to start. So I was kind of just feeling a bit weary from all of this, I think. Um, so that's where this where this came from. Um, and and opinions are great. I. I I think everyone should have opinions. Um, you shouldn't have to have an opinion. If you don't want to comment on something, I think that's absolutely fine too. Sometimes I feel like, do you know what? I, I just don't have an opinion on this, or I don't want to be really reactive about this at the moment. I'd rather read this report and just, you know, let it sink in and not have to say, oh, this is what I think. Um, in my society, we actually have this really on weird ongoing uh, debate about whether tapirs are the best animals in the world. We have staff members. You would be surprised at, at how often we talk about this. Um, 
Our, our HR manager, I think, is really annoyed, actually, at how much time is devoted to tapirs in my society. Um, I, and, you know, this is, this is a lot of my colleagues' opinion, but I'm a honey badger girl all the way. Um, but some things closer to our work are actually a lot more hurtful. Um, you know, most of us in this room are triers in one way or another. You know, we're trying in one way or another in our fields to maybe make the world a bit of a better place. Um, and it's really hard when you do put something out into the world and maybe things get a little bit twisted or are used for a political narrative that's actually not correct. So very recently, there was a bit of a storm in a Twitter teacup about uh, our site, theyworkforyou.com, and the data that is or isn't on there. Um, and we got caught up in a political narrative that we really didn't want to be a part of. And it's depressing. You know, you think you're doing something really good, you try really hard, um, and all of a sudden, Twitter is against you, and you're like, oh, everyone hates us. <laughs> I, at that point, you can just think, you know, I just, I just want to close the door and not open Twitter again now, I'm not obsess about it. Um, but the great thing, I think, about the team at My Society is uh, we kind of, you know, obviously it was like, uh, but we sat down, we thought about it, we talked about it. The whole organization talked about it. It wasn't just a kind of comms team, uh, you know, individual. It was, we all talked about this and how can we, how can we respond to this? Because we don't just want to be reactive. Um, we don't just want to say other people's opinions of this is wrong. Uh, we, want, we want to use this somehow um, to, to do good work. And we used it actually to, to start a better conversation, a more productive conversation about how facts and how data um, are necessary for us to be able to do this kind of work properly. Um, this, this kind of conversation highlighted something that we, you know, we knew we wanted to do, but maybe we needed to bring to the forefront a bit more and not just have our team, our coders do things, but actually ask Parliament to be better at doing data and to be better at putting that data out there. So it doesn't just benefit us and it doesn't just benefit their MPs, but it benefits anyone else that wants to use that data for the public good. Um, so we, we've submitted some evidence to Parliament and hopefully this will influence how they do data in the future. So obviously, you know, the, the kind of weight of opinion, it can be really daunting, it's not commuting, but I think actually we're trying to use it for a lot more good now. So we're trying to kind of get into a cycle of, of having, a, you know, having opinions, reading other people's opinions, accepting hopefully constructive criticism. <laughs> Um, and, and using that to kind of push our work on and to think more about what we, what we do, what we would like other people to do. Um, and, and yeah, just generate that kind of ongoing dialogue uh, rather than just being really reactive and really weary uh, from, from the weight of opinion. So I say, you know, this is tick tech. This, you know, we are about research and, and finding out what works and finding out what doesn't work or just finding out how what we do, uh, those ripples in the pond, uh, spread out. Uh, so I'm so excited to hear all of the opinions and all of the facts that are going to come out of all of the sessions. Um, I think we should strive to, to create as much knowledge around this field as possible, because even though it's not you know, that kind of new nascent field anymore, we are maturing, it's moving on at such a pace that it's really hard as researchers to keep up. Um, and I think it's really important for us not only to, to generate knowledge, but to admit to the extent of our abilities as well. Um, something, you know, civic tech exists in this incredibly complex world. And we can't maybe calculate everything. We can't maybe know with utmost certainty exactly what impact every little thing we do has. Um, it's not to say we shouldn't do it. It's not to say it's not a good thing. Um, I think we need to be honest about what we are able to do. And I think we have some super, super supportive funders who are realistic in that sense as well. I don't think, certainly as practitioners, we should be really, really worried that if we can't absolutely prove we are the best thing since sliced bread and that we've fixed democracy within you know, our two-year grant period, um, I think that's OK. Um, and I'm, I'm, sure that, I'm sure many of our funders would agree with that. 
Um, so yeah, I, I just kind of want, you know, I'm sure I'm not the only person that sometimes feels a bit weary about all of the opinion and trying to kind of sift out the facts. But I just, I suppose what I want to say is don't be daunted, you know. This conference specifically is about having these conversations in a, in a safe, supportive space. Um, absolutely be critical. Um, hopefully you can do that in a constructive way so that people can actually take something away from the conference and look at how they might do things in future. Um, I'm really excited to hear everything, everyone's opinions, everyone's new facts, everyone's new bits of research, everyone's new ideas about what kind of research they might want to do. Um, I think it's going to be a super couple of days, but that is just my opinion. Um, so just really please everyone have such a great time over the next couple of days. I look forward to speaking to as many of you as I can. Um, and that's it from me. Thank you. Thank you.